All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is 12 o'clock. So thank you again for joining um, today's uh, webinar. Again, my name is Carmela Williams. I'm a certified business advisor at the Youngstown Business Incubator, and I am a part of the entrepreneurship team. Um, and we are here to definitely assist you. Okay. Um, again, we're talking about the COVID-19 Economic Injury Disaster Relief Assistance Program. This should take about 45 minutes and we'll have 15 minutes for question and answers at the end. So please feel free to open up your chat box and put your questions in there. We have somebody regulating those and then towards the end in 45 minutes, we will go and respond to those questions. I'm going to go at a good pace so that we can get through um, this presentation so that we can definitely answer your questions and hopefully um, any concerns that you may have. Okay, thanks for joining us. So, so just so you know um, that this is information that we gathered uh, from the SBA and that we do recommend that you actually uh, seek out legal or, ta or tax advice from a certified public accountant because um, we do not give legal or tax advice. The SBA um, is administering the Economic Injury and Disaster Loan. So for uh, even more detailed information, you can see at the bottom of your screen, the 800 number, as well as the sba.gov forward slash disaster. That's the website. So with COVID-19 business loan options, we have, um, this was updated on April 2nd. I know there's new things coming in all the time, um, but there's three programs within that system. There's the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, the EIDL, E application. There's the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Cares Act, and then the PPP, the Pay Paycheck Protection Program and Small Business Relief Program. So we're starting with the EIDL. Uh, the purpose of that is actually uh, to help with working capital. So it's a working capital loan um, and provides temporary, and there's also looking at the temporary loss of revenues. Uh, this particular loan pays for immediate expenses during an emergency, um, and that does include fixed debt obligations. Uh, it also covers temporary uh, loss up to $2 million in assistance um, and loans up to $25,000 do not uh, require collateral. Underneath the working capital, uh, these loans can be used to pay for fixed debt obligations, payroll, accounts payable, rent, and mortgages and or mortgages. Um, and other bills that cannot be paid because of the disaster's impact. Now the interest rate on these loans are 3.75 uh, for small businesses that are without credit elsewhere, okay? Which is a very, very good rate. For eligible nonprofits, their rate is 2.75. So this does also apply to nonprofits. These do have 30-year uh, terms, which are determined on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and it is actually based on the borrower's ability to repay. Now, the Small Business Development Center um, does have a really great uh, YouTube video that um, they will go in depth on. So if you want to actually visit that website, um, you can do so. Um, and the link is below at the, at the bottom of this particular screen. I'll give you a few moments to, to write that down if you want to or screenshot it. Or I believe this PowerPoint will be made available to you as well. Okay. But that is out there in addition to what we're having here today. Now for the uh, disaster loan assistance, this is underneath the Economic Injury Disaster Loan application. This is strictly um, online, okay? Um, and one thing we wanna point out, because it's important that you, um, when you do apply for this loan, that you maintain all of your numbers. In the top right-hand corner, you'll see there's an OMB control number. You wanna make sure you write that down. That is going to be imperative for you um, at the end. Okay, and the actual application for this one um, is obviously right here in front of us, our COVID-19 relief.sba.gov. 
uh, forward slash pound sign for pass uh, hashtag uh, forward slash It goes through uh, eligibility uh, verification. So you'll pick one of those um, bubbles there, um, depending on where you fall into. Very self-explainable, okay? Um, and who is covered? Sole proprietors with or without employees are covered in this. Independent contractors are um, private nonprofits, they are, um, and anyone with not more than 500 employees. If there's a 500 plus, um, there must meet a size test. There's a size test that has to take place. Now, on this next page is the go no go page. So you basically have to be able to check all the boxes here. Um, and you can definitely read through those, but it's basically asking about illegal activity. Do you own more than 50%? Um, if it's not an agricultural enterprise, um, looking at other non-businesses non that they don't support, um, and in addition to lobbying, um, and anything that is state, local, or municipal government entity cannot be a member of Congress. So you have to be able to check all of those to be eligible for this loan to go forward on this application. Once you do pass that go no go test, then you will um, proceed to fill out this uh, form, which I feel, um, which, which I've seen has been one of the easiest forms that I've seen. Um, and basic business legal name, uh, your trade name. Um, and if that's the same as your business legal name, then it is, if it's not, you put your trade name down there. Now, in order to complete this application, you're going to need uh, your federal EIN or social security number, okay? So if, if, if you're just a sole proprietor. You'll also need your gross revenues and cost of goods sold for 12 months leading up to January 31st. So basically January 30th all the way of this year, all the way back to February, February 1st of last year the date your business was founded, and the number of employees. Now, some are asking, when, how do I know when my business was founded? In the next slide, uh, you can go and find that exact date on the Secretary of State's website by typing in your business name here, okay? Um, and then search, and it'll actually give you the date that, they, that you filed for your LLC or um, your fictitious name or however you have your, your entity set up. Um, and as we talked about uh, gross revenues, cost of goods sold, um, this was a question that's come up in previous um, things, uh, webinars we've had is what is cost of goods sold? And cost of goods sold are any direct um, expenses associated to you producing a product or providing a service. So you can sit down and look at what does it take for you to provide or make this actual product or service? And those are your expenses. Um, some of the things that do not fall into that category are examples are marketing, right? That is not a direct um, expense as it pertains to providing a service for your clientele. But labor is included in there. Um, I had advised one of my clients that uh, rent was included in there because there's a, or the mortgage, because if you're housed in that place and you are, for instance, a, uh, a veterinary, um, you, that's a direct cost associated with providing services to your clientele, a, vet, a, a veterinary service provider. Um, and it goes into some details, but I will also let you know that we weren't going, we're, going to go, we're not going to go into the sticks on this. We do have a staff of certified business advisors who will walk you through this process. Um, but if you can get those numbers ready, that'd be a great start. Now, before entering the final information, you'll actually be asked if you want to be considered for a $10,000 advance, which is um, on your loan, which is being called a grant, okay? Um, this is the $10,000 grant that's actually associated and mentioned in the CARES Act. Um, with that said, 
um, because I know I've walked some of my clients through that, you want to be able to also have your checking account information on hand because they're going to ask you for your routing and uh, account number because after about two or three weeks of being processed, um, if you are approved, it will be directly deposited that advance into your checking account. So that's one thing to also have on hand as well. Um, and before you actually submit and close your application, please make sure you have that OMB number um, and your application number, which will pop up at the end in big letters. You just want to be able to screenshot that or copy paste that. The CARES Act overview. Um, this particular program has uh, pro has uh, three different items within it, the Emergency Economic Injury Grant, the PPP, um, and the Small Business Debt Relief Program. The purposes of these are to provide working capital loans, uh, to reduce economic impact of temporary loss of revenues, and pay for fixed debt obligations. Um, this actually temporarily expands eligibility uh, for SBA economic um, injury disaster loans and provides an emergency advance up to 10,000 that we talked about the 10,000 already um, to small businesses and private nonprofits harmed by the COVID-19. And we already said it does that within three days, but we're also knowing that it takes, it's, it's a delay on the application process. So once you get that in, it is a, it's kind of like a hurry up and wait. Um, and then if you're approved, once you're approved, they would deposit that into your account. Um, the Emergency Economic Injury Grant to CARES Act. For this particular one, um, to access the advance, a small business first must apply to an EIDL and then request the advance. Um, so the advance, so in that application that I just showed you, it does um, that within the application, okay? Um, for this advance, there's no need to re be repaid. Um, if, but you have to actually uh, keep um, your employees on payroll, um, you have to pay for sick leave, um, meet increased production costs due to supply chain disruptions, or pay any obligations, and that includes debt, rent, and other mortgage payments. So you have to abide by the law and using the money appropriately. They, these grants are actually available from January 31st through December 31st of 2020. Um, the, the grants are backdated to January to allow for those who have already applied for the EIDLs to be eligible to receive the grant as well. On to the PPP. Um, loan forgiveness equals grant. That's what that is. When they talk about loan forgiveness, it's, it's basically a grant. Um, there's been 350 billion set aside uh, for this program uh, to provide interest-free and tax-free loans for small businesses to actually maintain their payroll during this emergency. You apply uh, for the PPP at lending institutions um, and that are actually uh, already existing in the US, the SBA, right? They're, so they're SBA certified lenders. Um, and there is a list of those I would check with your, the bank you're at right now, um, but they, they're banks that do the 7A lending program. Um, and they're, I believe as time goes on, more lenders will be approved by the Department of Treasury. But I will say this now, so please note on the left-hand side, there is actually an application that is online. And that's one that you can actually fill out. The form number, Make sure you write this down. It's SBA Form 2483. Um, the date this was released was March 20. Um, now, payments on the loans can be deferred for one year on the PPP program. Um, if the employer retains its workers uh, do, uh, for the duration of the cover period, um, and that's the weeks between February 15th and June 30th. If you do that, your loans will be forgiven underneath the PPP program. Um, so again, it acts like a grant um, if you retain your staff and payroll. The maximum loan amount is 2.5 times the entity's monthly average uh, payroll. So we remember that. 
Um, any business, including nonprofits, uh, self-employed individuals, and independent contractors are eligible. Okay. And those who apply for the EIDL program are still eligible for the PPP program as well. So here's some guidance on the PPP program. And this was, excuse me. Oh, great. This was updated as of the 2nd of April, okay? Um, here's the site for that particular one. It's underneath, it's on the SBA site. So you wanna be familiar with what this page looks like. So you know you're on the correct site. You're not going to a wrong site, okay? Um, and this is, even though we're providing guidance, there might be some unanswered questions. Um, there might be some updates that we have not missed, or that we missed, or there might be some actual new updates that are towards the end of this PowerPoint presentation. Okay. The interest rate for the PPP is actually 1% now. Um, the terms on the PPP is it's a two-year term limit the maximum loan amount is $10 million. Now, they actually can defer payments for six months, um, although during that six months, interest does still accrue. However, there's no collateral or personal guarantees required on the PPP. Okay. The forms that you'll need, we've talked about that already, is 2483, that's the SBA form 2483. Uh, you'll need payroll documentation. Um, you will need for the, pay, the PPP program, you'll also need um, the lender forms will be 2484. Um, this is a lender application for guarantee. Um, and now that particular piece must be filed electronically. Okay. So what lenders are gonna need? Um, they're um, gonna make sure that this loan request is necessary. Okay, to the ongoing operations of your business. Um, and that you're gonna actually use these funds to retain workers, maintain payroll, make mortgage, lease, or utility payments. Um, and what they're also gonna make sure is that the borrower does not have an application pending for EIDL duplicative, like duplicative doubles of the purpose and the amount applied for here. So you can't apply for PPP and EIDL and it'd be the same purpose that we refer to that as double dipping. Um, and then, and making sure that you have not received an actual loan duplicate of the purpose and the amount applied for here that we've already talked about. Um, payroll documents. So to have what the lenders are going to need from you for the payroll documents for the PPP program, um, you can um, be payroll processor records, payroll tax filings, or form 1099 miscellaneous sheets, or income and expenses from a sole proprietor. For borrowers that do not have that kind of documentation, the borrower must provide other supporting documentation such as bank records sufficient to demonstrate the qualifying payroll amount. So you have to be able to prove that um, with any of those documents. So they've actually made that a little bit more flexible, especially with um, asking you to provide bank records. Now, in order to determine the loan amount, um, you, first of all, I'm gonna say that anybody, it says anybody in excess of an annual salary of $100,000, you, you can't count anything in excess of that. Even if they're independent contractor or if they're employee, it goes up to 100,000, right? Um, you're also gonna look at payroll costs for the last 12 months um, for employees um, who, um, whose principal residence is the United States. Um, now, for this particular piece, what we're gonna do is, let's, let's say that your entire payroll is actually $100,000 for, for the last 12 months. It's an even number, right? So you take the 100,000, you are going to divide it by 12. That's gonna give you $8,333 um, average per month. Um, and then you divide, you times that times 2.5, 
and the loan amount to be able to cover um, your 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 uh, payroll system is twenty thousand eight hundred and thirty three dollars. Okay. Um, now, if you did get approved for the EIDL, they're going to take out for the PPP, they're going to take that amount out from what you're approved from, for with the PPP. Um, so, because you can't double dip, okay? You can apply for both, but you can't get the same money for the same purposes. So again, determining payroll, um, the sum of payments of any compensation with respect to employees is the following, salary, wages, commissions, or similar compensation, um, cash tips, um, vacation for, you know, for family medical leave, uh, allowance for dismissal or separation, um, healthcare benefits, um, insur including insurance, insurance premiums, um, payment of retirement benefit, payment of state or local uh, tax assessed on the compensation of the employee. Okay. So all that's included in your payroll. Um, excluded from your payroll cost. Compensations of an individual employee in excess of an annual salary of 100,000. We've said that already. As prorated for the period of February 15th through June 30th of this year. You can't also include payroll taxes, railroad retirement taxes, or income taxes. You can't include that. Or any compensation um, for anyone who lives outside of the United States primarily. Qualified sick leave wages for which credit is allowed under section 7001 um, for the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. Um, now on this, I'm saying it does not count, do not count independent contractors on this particular piece, okay? Now the use of proceeds for the PPP. Um, payroll costs, costs related to the continuation of group health care, um, benefits uh, during periods of paid sick, medical, family leave or insurance premiums, mortgage interest payments, not the mortgage prepayments, not the principal payments, just the mortgage interest payments. But rent is included, utilities, interest payments on any other debt obligations, again, interest payments um, that were incur incurred before February 15th of this year. Um, and also underneath this PPP, refinancing an SBA EIDL loan that was made to you between January 31st and April 3rd. Continuation of use of proceeds. Um, if you received an EIDL loan between the uh, January 1st and April 3rd, you can apply for a PPP loan. If the EIDL was not used for not used for payroll costs, it does not affect your eligibility for the PPP loan. Okay. If the EIDL, EIDL loan was used for payroll costs, the PPP loan must be used to refinance your EIDL loan, okay? So the, that's the ramifications for that. If, you, if it was used to uh, do your payroll cost, then uh, the PPP loan must be used to refinance the EIDL loan. Again, no double dipping. In addition, any advance on the EIDL will be deducted from the loan forgiveness amount on the PPP loan. 75% rule. Um, this is, this is uh, important for you to, to notice, to note, 75% uh, of the money that you receive for the PPP must be used for payroll costs, the list that we went over, okay? For purposes of determining the percentage of use of proceeds for payroll costs, the amount of any EIDL will be included. So if you have to include the approved, if you got approved for EIDL, you have to include it in that, and that is the overall arching part of your 75% that you have to actually put towards the, the, uh, the PPP that will be forgiven. Um, which you, you actually, you actually have to use towards that. Um, all right. Okay, so the loan forgiveness, getting to loan forgiveness. The amount of the loan forgiveness can be used 
um, up to the full principal amount of the loan and any accrued interest. The borrower is not responsible for any loan payment if the borrower use, uses all the loan proceeds for forgivable purposes and employee compensation levels are maintained. So I know you all are on this conference call right now because you want to do the right thing because you're collecting the right, you're collecting the information and getting much, as much information as possible. So I know that you all are going to be uh, following those rules. So this is good. Um, but again, it does, the forgiveness will depend in part on the total amount of payroll costs, okay? Um, and we've, 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 we've talked about that. Again, 75% must be used for um, payroll and no more than 25% um, can be attributed to non-payroll costs. Now we're going to compare and contrast because there's a lot of there's a lot of different loans and grants going on around here. The EIDL versus the EEIG. Real quick, okay? Um, the which is basically the PPP, which is yes, a lot. It's a lot. So uh, you see the uses: payroll versus payroll expenses, fixed debts versus employee salaries accounts payable versus mortgage interest, other expenses that can't be paid because of disaster impact, uh, interest on debt incurred before 2 15, 20. Um, the PPP is determined by 2.5 times the payroll, the EIDL is up to 2 million, okay? The interest rates, um, you can see, and there's a, you have to, there's no, for, no payment uh, for six to 12 months, but the PPP program is 10 years versus thir up to 30 years for the EIDL. Um, the EIDL is 0% uh, eligible for forgiveness. Uh, the PPP with approval is up to 100% uh, forgivable. Um, now, the only piece that I know we talked about this is a 10,000 that's advanced to you. There's an advance that is forgivable if you are using it for the appropriate uh, items that they tell you to use it for. Okay. We talked about this already. You can apply, but you can't double dip. So it has to be used for separate purposes. It can't be used for the same purpose. Um, again, we've talked about this already. Um, we've talked about this already. Okay, so for this 10 years at 4%, we, we've gone through the comparables on that. Um, loan term and interest rate maximums. There, again, just to reiterate this though, because I don't think I've talked about this particular piece, there are zero loan fees on this loan, okay, on the PPP. And there is zero prepayment fees as well. Um, a little bit more in depth on how forgiveness um, is calculated so we can hopefully answer a little bit of your questions uh, prior to, and if not, we will dive into those. We are on track. Um, forgiveness on covered loan is equal to sum of payroll cost and other payments. It also is incurred during the covered eight week period. Okay. Um, but it is also compared to previous year or time frame. Okay. the sum of payroll costs plus other payments, any payment of interest on any covered mortgage obligation, any payment on any covered rent obligation, any covered utility payment. Okay, so now we're looking at the Small Business Debt Relief Program underneath the CARES Act. This one, there's 17 billion in funding um, in the federal bill for this program. And it's gonna provide immediate relief to small business with non-disaster uh, SBA loans. In particular, this is referring to the SBA 7A, 504, and micro loans. Okay, bit, a bit different program. Under it, the SBA administration will cover all your loan payments on loans, including principal, um, interest, and fees for six months. 
So what is a 7A loan? How do you apply? Um, they are an affordable loan product for borrowers who lack credit elsewhere, okay? And you actually need to versatile, versatile your, your financing to um, diversify it. It provides short-term or long-term working capital, um, and you do have to apply through a mission-based 7A program lender. Okay, and I'm sure that you can look those up and find that particular lender online. Um, there are several banks and institutions who do the 7A loan, and specifically in the Mahoney Valley, um, I believe we'll have that information, but um, your local banks do provide that. So which um, loans are eligible for debt relief under this program? Um, it is the following, <laughs> not made under the pay, the, uh, anything that's not made under the pay uh, check protection program. Um, the 504, 504 loans and micro loans. So that's all included underneath the SBA seven loans. Please note that a disaster loan, it is not eligible for this. So how do you know if you're eligible? Um, you'll need your business six digit North American industry classification system number. Okay, also referred to as NICS, num NICS numbers. Depends on who you're talking to. Okay, again, I'll let you write that down, the North American industry classification system, if you don't have that. Uh, you also need a three-year average annual revenues. And since each program that we've discussed here, a little the, the short list of the three, it has different requirements. I want you to go to that uh, www.sba.gov forward slash funding hyphen programs forward slash loans for more details. So you can screenshot this screen and this I believe will be made available as well. All right, so at this particular point, we are going to take question and answers. I know there, um, I, I hope that we were able to hit some of your questions, but um, we're gonna open that up right now. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Corey from the YVI as well, and I'm just gonna sort of be facilitating um, some of the questions that we get in. So if you guys have any questions, I know we've got a couple already, um, you can send them through the Q&A portion or through the chat portion um, and we'll make sure that Carmela gets a chance to answer them. So Carmela, the first question that we have, um, this goes back to the very first option that you had talked about. Um, does the term employee include subcontractors that receive a 1099 from her business and not a W-2? Um, this was regarding the very first, I think, the SBA EIDL um, opportunity. Uh, yes, it does. Um, initially, I believe that didn't, but it does. Um, that is a, if that, that's a part of your uh, payroll, and that's what you actually issued 1099s for, yes. Okay. Um, another question, does the EIDL decide the amount that is allowed to be borrowed? Uh, it does um let's go back and get those specific um outside of i know we got lost in the shuffle on that because there's so many programs what i do E idea. What I do know is that underneath the, um, when you do apply in that um, online web, it's an online uh, web application, it's asking you for your numbers. They are going to determine what your loan amount is. You'll put in, you know, your, your, your total revenues for the last 12 months. You're going to put in your cost of goods sold. They will take those numbers and they will determine um, what the loan amount will be for that. The initial um, advance on that is up is up to $10,000, but that particular loan, um, they're going to um, ask you those particular questions and then they will determine what that is. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this one, I, I think we sort of already answered this one at towards the end, but the question is, 
I filed for EIDL on March 17th and have not received any correspondence or reply. Can I still file for the PPP? Yes, you can. What they will do is that um, if it's going to be for the same usage, they're just going to subtract that out of your PPP loan. But you can still apply, yes, because that will go directly to the bank, that application. And then we have another question, um, and we might need some more information on this one, but it's, um, what if a self-employed person needs to cover their salary as well as their wife? I'm not sure what um, they're asking about, um, which um, funding option, but is that an option through any of these sources? Well, they do cover self-employed individuals, and then your, your wife would be considered an independent contractor, I'm assuming, or a 1099 or an employee. And just as long as that particular person is actually on the, in, uh, on the books and can be proven even by pulling from your bank statements, that is all inclusive if they are actually working for the company. But we can gather more information on that later, um, maybe more so on a one-on-one if need be. Sure thing. Uh, we have another question that just came through. If your business is transportation, but you currently do not have any employees and that has suffered because of social distancing, is there a chance that you will be eligible for the EIDL? Um, you, if you're saying you don't have any employees, but you, if you're the business owner, I would assume that you are an employee working um, that would cover you, even if you were doing and it, it goes back if we go if i'm going back over my notes correctly it does say that you can actually pull bank statements as it also a way to prove that you've paid in it yourself virtually so if we're looking at like an owner's withdrawal um that you've paid yourself so it does give you wiggle room to prove that there is that you are paying yourself paying employees All right, that is all the questions that we have. I think we still have a couple minutes. If anybody, um, well, we've actually got plenty of time. So if anybody still has more questions, um, send those through. Uh, we just had one just came through and it's just a confirmation to confirm my 1099 are payroll cost, even though they're not actually employees. Yes. Yes, correct. Okay. Then just another note too, to anybody that's still on the call. If you guys have questions that you don't, want answered um, out loud to anybody. If you have personal information that you'd like you know, to get some clarification on regarding your, your company, um, feel free to reach out to us. We are still working, we're still doing um, personal calls and one-on-one -on -one calls and meetings. So if anybody has questions that way too, we are still available. Right, and also my email address, because I, I did not put mine in here because uh, Vern was leading this conversation, uh, but my email address is cwilliams, C is in Cat Williams, W I L L I A M S at Y B I dot org. And I will put that, I don't know if I can put it in the chat or not. Yeah, you can put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Um, just got another question that came through Can previous year's tax documents be used for proof of documentation? That can be a part of it. Um, I don't recall. I don't recall that being on the list that we just went over, but it can be a part of it. It can be a part of you pulling your numbers down for your, you know, your cost of goods um, sold as well as your um, um, understanding, you know, your revenues for the last 12 months. Um, but I will pull that out. Okay, we just had another question. We bank with a small credit union and they're not offering the PPP loan. Do we need to open a separate business checking account with a bank that does offer it? In theory, you should not have to do that. Um, there are some banks that are gonna be actually accepting even if you're not um, an actual, you know, banking, uh, co a company that banks with them. I believe, Corey, we had talked about this. It was First National is doing that, is that right? Yes, First National is taking them if you're not, um, if you're not a current banking, if you're not banking through them currently. Um, Huntington Bank was, but they've temporarily suspended yeah. that because they've gotten so many applications. Um, there is talk though that they will be opening that back up again. Um, so there are a, a few local banks that are. Um, so, yes. 
These are all very good questions. Just got another question come through. Um, I am a service provider. Can you review some of the expenses that I should include in the question about cost of goods sold on the application? A service provider, yeah. Um, hold on one second. Um, so I went over this with a, another cl particular client. Um, what kind of service do you offer? If you don't mind me asking, um, well, I'll give you this example. This one, she was a, she's a veterinary, um, she's a vet veterinarian uh, doctor. So that what we explained and what I looked up, it seemed as if, you know, in order for her to provide that service, she needs to be able to pay her rent. We talked about rent already that's in there. She had to pay her payroll, right? Any, um, subs if you have a subscription that's directly that you need that, helps you to directly provide service to those clientele that would be that particular piece as well um if if there are um it might it's going to be a little bit less than if you were providing an actual product but your payroll is also included in that direct um that the actual amount how much you get paid And for that, I can send you, if you send in your email to us, I'll send you over the actual list of things you can look at. And you can get, you can have all that information. I just, I don't have that email right in front of me right now, but I do have that. Good question. All right. Is there any other questions that we can answer at this point? We've got a couple minutes left. Um, just to just to review again, just to reiterate, um, I will be sending you all um, because you registered for this. We should have your email. I'll be sending you all a copy of the slides that we had today, um, so you'll have that information to review. We've also put together um, some resources on our website that we have found to be fairly helpful um, regarding specifically these two uh, two of the three funding options that we talked about today. Um, and then there's some other resources available as well too. Um, some of them include just um, some other things that you guys should consider for your business at this point. Um, if you go to ybi.org backslash coronavirus, or if you just go to our website, ybi.org, and you'll see COVID-19 at the very top, um, you can click on that and have access to all those resources as well. Um, there's also a place on that page for you to contact us directly. So if anybody does um, want a one-on-one -on -one meeting with one of our counselors. Um, this is regardless of the type of business that you have, the type of entrepreneur that you are. Um, we're willing to work with anybody at this point because we know that this is a, a challenging time for all of us. Um, so just, to, just know that we are still working, um, even though our whole team is remote, we are still here for you. So feel free to reach out to us at any point. Um, Nancy, I see you raised your hand. If you have a question, um, feel free to tape it out real quick before we uh, before we end. Oh, you're welcome, Danny. Danny said, "Not a question. Just thank you for doing this." Yeah. You're more than welcome. All right. I don't see any more questions at this point, so. Um, I think we might be good to close. Like I said, um, stay tuned for an email. It's going to come from myself. My name is Corey Patrick. I'm the director of marketing for the YBI. Um, you'll get the email from me with all the slides from today, um, a link to our, our website with other resources. And like I said, feel free to reach out to any of us at any point for um, assistance or a meeting or whatever you guys need at this point. Great. Thank you all. Thank you, Corey. Thank you all. Great. Thanks, Carmela. You're welcome. Y'all have a really great day. Bye now.